All right, folks, it's time to ask the one question that's haunted us since we first tasted ocean water as a kid and immediately regretted life. Why the heck is the ocean salty? I mean, was it an accident? Did Mother Nature just spill her salt shaker? Or was Poseidon just going through a breakup and decided to cry in bulk? Well, get ready. We're diving deep. Literally and metaphorically. And no, this isn't one of those boring lectures where I tell you sodium ions bond with chloride ions, blah, 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 and your soul leaves your body out of sheer boredom. This is the weird, hilarious, unnecessarily dramatic version you didn't know you needed. First, what is salt? And no, not the kind you throw at your ex. Let's start with the basics, because we're not savages. Salt, also known as sodium chloride, or if you're feeling extra fancy, N-A-C-L, is that delicious little compound that makes french fries worth living for. But here's the thing, salt is absolutely everywhere on earth. It's in the ground, it's in your sweat, it's in your tears, it's in your ex's attitude, and most importantly, it's in the ocean. But why? Did someone dump 12 trillion salt shakers into the sea? Did the ocean get flavor tested by Gordon Ramsay? Well, no. But I wish that were the answer. Earth's early years, when the planet was basically a hot mess. Let's rewind time. Go back a few billion years when Earth was basically a cosmic toddler. Throwing tantrums, erupting volcanoes, and generally being a dramatic mess. Back then, it rained. A lot. And I mean biblical level raining. Like the sky was doing a hundred hour energy cleanse. All that rain? It wasn't just to ruin dinosaur parades. It was breaking down rocks. And what's in rocks? Minerals. And inside those minerals, ding, 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 salt. So rainwater runs over the land, scrubs the rocks like a cosmic dishwasher, picks up little bits of minerals, including sodium and chloride, and carries them to the lowest place on Earth, the ocean basins. It's kind of like nature saying, hey, I washed this salt off my driveway and dumped it into the nearest giant bowl. Hope you like seasoning. Okay, but why doesn't the ocean get diluted? Here's a brain teaser. Rain keeps falling. Rivers keep flowing into the oceans. So shouldn't it get less salty over time? Wrong. That would make sense. You see, water from rivers and rainfall comes and goes. It evaporates. It returns to the sky, dances around as clouds, and rains back down again like a celestial shower. But salt? Salt doesn't evaporate? It's like that one clingy friend who refuses to leave. Water goes on vacation, salt stays behind. Like, it's cool, I'll just chill here, permanently. So every time water leaves the ocean, it's like, peace, I'm off to be a cloud. And salt's like, I'll just stay salty forever. That's why over millions of years, salt just keeps accumulating like your unread emails. The secret ingredient, rivers, AKA salt delivery guys. Think of rivers as DoorDash for salt. They pick up salt from rocks, run down mountains, and dump it all in the ocean like an overexcited intern delivering packages. In fact, around 4 billion tons of dissolved salts get added to the ocean each year. Let me say that again, 4 billion tons. It's like the ocean is participating in a never-ending salt challenge. Can I hold just a little bit more? Yeah, no problem. If oceans were soup, Earth is the overzealous grandma going, eat, you're too bland. But wait, why aren't lakes salty too? Ah, good question, you little genius. Here's the deal. Most lakes have an outlet, a place where water flows out, like a river or a stream. So the salt doesn't build up. It gets washed away. But oceans, oceans are like, yeah, no exit. We're going to trap everything here, like a toxic group chat. However, there are salty lakes, like the Dead Sea or Utah's Great Salt Lake. Why? Because they don't have an outlet either. They're just tiny oceans with a big salt addiction. Is ocean salt good for you? Spoiler, no. Don't drink it. Listen, I don't care how hardcore your survival instincts are, do not drink ocean water. Why? Because your kidneys didn't sign up for that level of salt drama. They're built to process small amounts of salt. You chug a glass of seawater, your body's like, what is this? Are we trying to become beef jerky? Drinking seawater actually dehydrates you more, not less. It's the most ironic betrayal ever. So, next time you're stranded on a desert island and the ocean 
is looking like a giant Gatorade cooler. Don't be fooled. If you removed all the salt, bad idea by the way, let's say hypothetically, you got inspired after watching too many DIY videos and decided to desalt the entire ocean. You know, just to see what happens. First of all, congratulations on going full Bond villain. Second of all, prepare for chaos. Ocean salt isn't just there for flavor, my friend. It actually does a lot. Oh, it helps regulate ocean currents. You know, those underwater conveyor belts that keep Earth's temperature livable. It affects marine life, since fish and sea creatures have adapted to swim in a salty soup. And most importantly, it gives the ocean its unique don't even think about drinking me vibe. If you sucked out all the salt, marine ecosystems would collapse, temperatures would go wild, and honestly, the dolphins would be very, very mad. Salt is an ocean bodyguard. You may think salt's just chilling in the ocean, floating around doing nothing, but no. Salt is the unsung bouncer of the ocean nightclub. It controls the density of seawater. Saltier water is heavier and sinks while less salty water floats. This layering creates different currents, helps transport heat around the planet, and basically keeps our climate from going off the rails. Imagine the ocean without salt. No layers, no heat circulation, no underwater drama. Just a sad, flavorless puddle with nothing to offer. Thanks, salt. We owe you one. Yes, the ocean is getting saltier, but slowly. Okay, don't panic, but yes, the ocean is still getting saltier. Very slowly. Like snail on vacation levels of slow. Why? Because rivers keep bringing salt, and some processes, like underwater volcanoes and hydrothermal vents, also add minerals to the mix. But there's also some balance. Ocean organisms use some minerals. Others get buried in sediments. So it's not like we're heading toward a global salt apocalypse anytime soon. Still, fun fact, if you evaporated all the ocean water, the leftover salt could cover the entire Earth with a layer 500 feet thick. Yes, 500 feet. That's taller than the Statue of Liberty wearing platform shoes. So who decided salt was cool in the first place? You might be wondering, why did salt become such a big deal anyway? Well, beyond the ocean, salt was basically ancient currency. The word salary comes from sal, the Latin word for salt. That's right, people were literally paid in salt. Imagine getting a paycheck today in salt. Hi, I'd like to deposit this sack of sodium chloride, please. It was so valuable because salt preserves food, which was a game changer back when refrigerators were just a glimmer in the future's eye. So yeah, the ocean, it's not just salty, it's historically rich. Does other planetary water have salt too, or is Earth just a weird salty snack? Great question, curious human. Short answer, we don't totally know yet. Longer answer, we think some of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons, like Europa and Enceladus, may have salty oceans underneath their icy surfaces. So Earth may not be the only briny diva in the solar system. But for now, Earth holds the title for most dramatically seasoned liquid reservoir in the universe. Congrats, Earth. You salty, salty legend. Okay, but how salty is it really? Let's quantify the saltiness for you science nerds out there. On average, seawater is about 3.5% salt. That means if you have one liter of seawater, there are roughly 35 grams of salt inside it. In other words, if the ocean were soup, it would be way over-seasoned. Compare that to your tears, which are only about 0.9% salt, and suddenly crying into the ocean seems like the least salty thing happening. Also, just FYI, the Dead Sea? That bad boy is around 34% salt. That's not a sea anymore. That's practically a salt smoothie. Well, there you have it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We've got more absurd science breakdowns coming your way. Uh, because science doesn't have to be boring. It just has to be sassy, salty, and slightly unhinged. Thanks for watching.